Before dedicating his life to bull riding, Cody Jesus says he spent his childhood living in the poorest conditions on a Navajo reservation, but it gave him the grit he needed in the sport he loves the most. I grew up in a little town called Sawmill, Arizona. It's on the Navajo reservation. No electricity, no running water. Like they say, tough times make tough people. <laughs> My older brother, he recorded all the bull riders only way back in the day. Told my mom that I wanted to be a bull rider and she kind of chuckled a little bit and didn't think I was serious. And after I got off school that day, I went home and tied up a barrel between two trees. And two days later, my mom took me to my first bull riding. My mom and my grandma were probably the biggest support systems growing up. Probably my first big win ever was at Navajo Nation Fair. And that year they were giving away $10,000 in a final four ride off. Starts the line just right and changed my life. The riding sensation from the Navajo Nation. Yeah, I think it's really cool to have that name because I think a lot of Navajo people grow up like I did. I hope to give people hope like I had hope growing up. and It's a big name to live up to or a big responsibility to live up to, but I mean, there's no other way I'd have it. Well, welcome. Thank you for having me. So uh, this has really made a difference to the reservation and the people that you grew up with? Oh, for sure. I think uh, bull riding is a big thing on the res, and I just hope to open the doors for them uh, little bull riders around there and change their lives. Yeah, and they refer to you as a pride of the Navajo Nation. At first, you, you didn't have much of a place to live, right? It was just really, well, you didn't have much of a place. Yeah, my mom finally, uh, when we were about 10 or 11, she pulled out all her life savings and kind of built a little shell of a house. And there was no carpet or nothing, no running water, no electricity. And uh, a couple of years later, we ended up getting a generator that we'd turn on. And I mean, she'd watch her Dr. Phil and stuff like that. And <laughs> we'd kind of watch the TV, but <laughs> it was on for a couple of hours and then we had to shut it off. And you know, if we didn't have gasoline for the generator, we'd just do our homework under candlelight. Yeah. Well, that's what you want to aspire to, is get a generator and watch Dr. Phil. <laughs> uh, that's when you know you got some traction in this world, right? Yes, sir. Uh, but when you started to really get some success and, and earn some prize money and that sort of thing, uh, you didn't just say, hooray for me. You said, I, I want to give back and, and make a difference. And what'd you do with that success? Yeah, um, I went home and started building an arena up, and I think, you know, I got a pretty nice arena. I got a good set of practice bulls. All the barrels them kids can come and ride and, you know, try to ride their way out of poverty just like I did, and I, I think I gave them a fair shot to do it. I think, that is, I think that is so great. I'm so proud of what you're doing, and I, I hope you're proud of it as well. 